Well, let's keep working with these kind of limits where you can't just plug in the value right away. So again, a, a big method is to factor. Uh, so that would be for this one like we just did. Uh, part B, this one you would factor out as well, get that denominator to cancel. Um, but sometimes they don't factor that easily, um, like in the case of part C and D. So we're gonna do part C. Um, <clears throat> for part D, you can look at the answer key for that one. Uh, if I don't get it fixed in the actual document, um, just keep in mind that that plus sign should have been a minus. It was a little typo. My bad. <clears throat> All right, so for the ones that involve a square root like this on the top, <clears throat> we are going to use a technique from Algebra 2 or Math 120, Intermediate Algebra, whatever it was you took. <clears throat> and we're going to use the conjugate. And we're going to multiply it to the top and the bottom. And I'm going to use the conjugate that has the square root in it. So root x plus 1 plus 2. And I'm going to also multiply it to the denominator. Because if I multiply something to the top, I have to multiply the same thing uh, underneath. And that looks kind of weird, like, oh, why did you do that? Well, here's why. Because now I have some algebra that I can actually play with. So I'm going to foil the top. And I have to foil because I'm multiplying quantities together. But if you look at it, you know, you're multiplying by the conjugate. So that's kind of your reverse of the difference of squares. So you just need to multiply the first two things together should just give us x plus 1, and then multiply the back two things together, which should give us negative 4. And underneath, I'm not going to foil it. I'm just going to leave it factored. Because you want this x minus 3 to cancel out, because once it's gone, you should be able to plug the 3 in for x. So if I foil this out, I'm going to lose my x minus 3 factor, and I would just have to factor it back out. So a lot of times in calculus you don't foil denominators, you just leave them. Not all the time, but most of the time you'll just you're just gonna leave that denominator alone. The numerator is yes, you're gonna do stuff with them. Okay, so just add up what you can on the top and hey you got the x minus three. Well, that's nice, because now your x minus 3's cancel out, and you're left with a 1 on top. <clears throat> and now you can plug the 3 in for x. So the 1 on top stays 3 plus 1, that's 4, square root of 4 is 2, and 2 plus 2, unless I'm mistaken, is usually 4. Okay, part D. It's practically identical, uh, just some of the numbers are different. So you're going to multiply by that conjugate, work all the way through it, uh, and it comes out with an actual result. Just as a side note too, I've seen a lot of calculus students and they'll, get, they'll see a question like this and they'll go, hey, so if I plug in the 3, that gives me 0 on top and a 0 underneath. And then they go, well, that can't work, so that's a D and E. And then they move on. Don't you dare put that. If it's a question like this, if you actually know what the function, or you, like you actually have it defined for you, chances are it's not going to be a D and E. Like you're going to be able to do something to it or graph it uh, and be able to get a result. So don't just stick a deal, big old D and E on it. Otherwise, you're probably going to get it wrong. So there you go. You can either heed the warning or, or not. If you don't believe me, then you'll find out on the exam that I was speaking truth. <clears throat> All right. Moving on. Uh, example E. Uh, we got a little bit of a trig function here. Still can't plug in the zero for theta. And we got gives you a zero in the denominator. So we got to play around with it. And this one, there's more than one way you can go. 
Um, you can use the conjugate of the denominator. Um, you know, there's there's sometimes there's more than one direction with trig functions. Uh, with this one, um, I'm going to actually take advantage of that sine squared. I'm going to switch it out with 1 minus cosine squared. And now I can factor that. So 1 minus cosine, 1 plus cosine. one minus cosines cancel. Now you can plug in the zero for your theta. So cosine of zero is one. And that's gonna come out to two. Okay, I'll let you take a look at part F uh, from the notes. Um, and then I'll stop the video here and we'll continue in the next one.